Just like many of you, I often wonder what will happen to us once artificial intelligence and all its all types of artificial intelligence, what it means for us as a species and what it means for us as we continue to regulate our bodies and um, continue to get bombarded with constant um, algorithms that don't necessarily help us but keep us addicted to our phones and keep us addicted to social media and you know um, I have a, a couple of books coming up talking about artificial intelligence and what it means to uh, interact with it and by it I mean the programs and systems that are being created right now as we speak um, that are mirroring human intelligence and I often think what that is doing to our children um, that are growing up in a world where you can pretty much ask a machine anything and it's almost and we're almost there almost as intelligent as the smartest human and I think that it's worth having the conversation right now for the sake of our for the sake of our kids and for the sake of our communities. Um, so how do we guard against the bombardment of constant social media and constant addictions to social media and all its platforms, even including this one, wherever this is posted. I don't know, there's like 20 accounts that we post on, but the question is how do we self-regulate and what is important. So what is important for me as a human being is that uh, that feeling that I feel when I'm out driving and I'm having a wonderful day and I stop, we all know this, we've all done it, we stop at a red light and you look to your left or your right and there's like a homeless person there asking for money or a veteran saying that you know they're down now and they need help. And that feeling that you get as a human being, feeling like, oh, wow, you know, you, you know, most of us, of course, we give them something or money or food or whatever is in the car. But it's that feeling that we get when we realize that, you know, we're really fortunate to be driving a car or we're really fortunate to, you know, have a career and to be alive and not be out in the street. And I live in Las Vegas, so when people are homeless here, it's very hot, like it's, it's death, deathly hot. But that what I'm talking about is that feeling that you get when you feel like helpless, that you can't do more for people, that you wish, you know, you had all the money in the world and you could get people off the streets or when you hear the story of kids being trafficked or, or kids being mistreated and you feel like you could do more and as a citizen and as a human being you can only do so much because we live in a world where, at least in the United States, a ca capitalist ideology where you know your money is basically equal to who you are. People associate who they are and their worth by how much money they have. It's really sad. It's not like that in all countries. And I visited many countries where that's not the ideology, but in the United States, your worth is tied to your money. Your worth is tied to um, your work. And in a lot of ways, the, the conversation that needs to happen is really what makes us human. What makes us human is, is this emotion that I'm talking about when you you know, when you stop at a red light and you feel like this ache for this person that's out in the heat <laughs> and, you know, you only have so much money and, you know, you know that maybe the little bit you give them isn't going to really help out, but it's that feeling that you, that you have in your heart or some part in your body that yearns to be able to do more for people. And I believe that that's what makes us human. I believe that that is the core essence of what makes us uniquely human and that's uniquely a human experience. I don't know of, <laughs> you know, um, the trees or the plants or the birds or the, you know, the animals having that, that thing <laughs> when they see a homeless person, but 
but it is uniquely human. And as we move forward with artificial intelligence and all its components and all its programs and all its new invent new inventions that haven't even been thought of yet, there is a need for us to recognize what makes us uniquely human. And I believe that it's this thing, whatever you want to call it, it's this 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 thing at the pit of your stomach, your soul, your gut, your heart that says uh, to another human being, I see you, you matter. And, you know, I'm sorry that I can't give you a million dollars so you can get out of this situation, you know, being homeless. But, but there's something in me that recognizes that person and that, that feels for that person. And I believe that that's what's going to keep us alive, um, regardless of how fast or crazy AI gets, because we'll always be able to tap into this understanding within ourselves that allows us to feel love for another human being. I don't think that machines will ever be able to do that. There's something very organic and biological and spiritual about that. And I believe that that's what's going to keep us alive. So that's my two cents on it. And um, I look forward to uh, sharing the uh, few books that we're writing about AI. I'm collaborating with a few other writers and we're talking about these topics. And I hope that the books are helpful and that they help open up the conversation about our future with uh, these new amazing technologies that are coming out. I do want to share a a video, a poem. Most of you who know me know that uh, I am a poet. I was born a poet, and I write a lot of poetry. And I, because of artificial intelligence, I've been able to turn a lot of the poems that I write into songs. So I wrote this poem about um, exactly this topic about us listening to our ancestors, seven generations before us, and listening to the voice inside of us and what makes us uniquely human. So anyways, I hope you in There's a whisper in the wind calling out from deep within Seven voices guide the way Not the masses, just the sway Of hearts that know how to bend That move in time, that make amends We were made for more than silence More than walls and wired fences There's a code beneath our skin Where the murmuration begins We rise, we turn, we breathe, we Solo, 
were constellations made to follow Just seven voices in your ear Enough to melt a thousand years We rise